Weaving watercolors for beginners. You need two of the same paintings, scissor, tape, and a little patience. In this one I'm making the top dark, the middle medium, and the tulips light. Stay tuned until the end and I'll show you a different version where the tulips were dark. You'll find the outline on my website and you can just trace it. So you can use any colors. I like to use related colors like blue and green that are in, next to each other on the color wheel. And I'm bringing the dark color down to about a third of the page. Then I threw in some yellow. That was phthalo blue. And this will be most of the painting. It made just a green. You notice I'm not being all that careful. There I'm dotting in some of the blue. I don't want it to look too flat, so I'm giving it some texture. But I'm not being terribly careful because you don't have to do a lot of detail or realism to make a very interesting and beautiful painting this way. All you have to do is get out your paints, trace your pictures, and fill in the spaces. My black brush is a silver black velvet three quarter inch oval wash brush. This is my favorite brush. It holds a lot of water, inexpensive, and it works really well. I've had this one for going on nine years now. So if you want more texture, you could sprinkle your wash with table salt before it dries. Or take a small brush, dip it in clean water, and tap it on your finger to spatter water into the drying wash. Either way makes those little splotchy areas, which can be pretty nice. If you have an area that's too dark, just lift it up and put in some of the lighter color. Once that dries, Paint the tulips whatever color you like. I went for red, but I'm keeping the value of the red much lighter than the value of the blue. In this one, I put yellow at the bottom, and just so it didn't look flat, I put in some darker red. To make the leaves look different, I started with a light blue. This is cobalt turquoise and mix that with yellow. It's a little brighter and it tends to come forward but also it's a lighter value so that makes it stand out. Don't sweat your flowers very much just get your shapes in and be sure you have a difference in values. And that's about it. For the second painting, just use slightly different colors. Use a purple for the sky or a dark green and make the background either more green or less green by adding, you can add red to your green to tone it down. So if you have one painting with bright colors and one with more subdued colors usually works well. Here's my two paintings. Now what do you do? Well, I took a ruler and on the back of the paintings, on one, I drew some lines half inch apart horizontally, the other one half inch apart vertically. You notice I'm not cutting each of these off. I'm just cutting them up to the top. 
I cut the other ones and now I'm trying to weave them together. Now, when I first started, it's been a couple years since I tried this and it seemed really awkward. You wanna go over one and under the other. And I'm starting with not number one because I'm not doing the top, I'm starting with number three. And then I have to kind of push it and work it up. And it's kind of a pain, but it's getting there. And I try to line it up somewhat so that the two pictures are somewhat close. There, that's not bad. And then I cut out the next strip. Now I'm not doing a really tight weave, so I'll probably end up leaving out some of the strips. Um, if you're a perfectionist, you could, you know, trim some of these strips that were cut horizontally so that they would fit in better, so that your pictures line up. But once you get it in, then you have to push it up in place and kind of get it in the right spot. I don't think I really got enough value contrast in my reds. The two reds look a lot alike. But after about the third one, it started to get easier. I began to get the hang of it. And it started going a lot faster. So I ended up leaving out four of the strips. Uh, the two at the top and a couple others, just so I could get the pictures to line up. Once you get it all done, take a piece of tape and put it across the bottom to hold those in place. You can also put tape along the sides, but I'm gonna put this in a mat. See, I have extra strips left over that I didn't use. And here's what the finished picture looks like. And here's what it looks matted. This makes a lovely picture, whether you're a beginner or an advanced painter. And it's kind of fun. So zoom on over to debwatson.org. Um, this lesson is free, totally free. Thank you for watching. 